And we're live. And we are live. Efren's telling us. There we are. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, we're not live. We are, we are definitely not a well-oiled machine here. Oh, just oh, in we're case live. we are live. Now we're live. We are, <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> wow, so we speed bumps. A boom, seamless boom, 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 intro boom, boom. into yeah. episode 13 of Fistful of Collars here. So pro. Well, number one, okay, where are we? We're in the Flow Sports office. The studio is no more. Don't worry, we're building a new one. It's gonna be awesome. But <laughs> by hand. By Bring hand. everybody up to speed. Yep. Yeah, but for now, well, we have fish. We have so fish. Fish tank. Yeah. So welcome back, episode 13 of A Fistful of Collars. It's been a couple of weeks, right? We've been left you guys in limbo with no podcast. Where have we been? Well, we've been on the road for our Road to World Tour because just around the corner, literally next week, begins the 2018 IBJJF World Championships, which we are super stoked for. But let's take it back a little bit. <laughs> road to Worlds, man, we've been away for a while, right? So let's start off, where'd you guys go? Oh my God, man, we have literally been all over the world checking out Jiu Jitsu. Half we the went, world and back. Exactly. It was a pretty good job. We, we, we had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> New York, Norway, Ireland, Washington, DC. We, we hit a bunch of gyms. We hit some of the biggest guys, the best guys in the world. We and also hit the beach in Norway. <laughs> Norway they have has beaches. They have beaches and they're gorgeous and gorgeous untouched. Beaches, yeah. uh, Reed's also the king of Dublin now. We went out. It was crazy. It's official. It's official. Yeah. It's official, yeah. So we're working on some paperwork. <laughs> and, uh, and New York was amazing as well. But you guys took on Brazil, the motherland. Yeah. We did. Tell us I about mean, that. This is a big jump up from last year, right? Where it was like North Carolina, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We, 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 yeah. we went international this year. So yeah, we, we only had like the, the one country, but we hit a couple of locations. It's we a pretty big Paulo. country. It's a very big country. Porto Alegre. Sao Paulo, Porto Alegre, and finishing Rio. off in Rio de Janeiro. And we started at Brazilian National which was like what a way to start a trip which was yeah. completely incredible but I will say after going to all those different places Rio was my favorite oh for sure. really yeah Rio's my favorite yeah. why is that why Rio it's just beautiful man it's a beautiful place you know <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of beautiful people the culture is beautiful it's just beautiful mm. and we got to we got to climb to the top of a, a massive mountain that overlooked the entire City, which was just. You want to talk mountains? We all, we also this, this scale scale mountains. I think our mountain was bigger. I think our mountain was bigger. I had the best time <laughs> climbing. <laughs> tell, tell everybody how much fun you had. Uh, can you pronounce where we were? Prekestulen. 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 Shout out uh, Norway. Prekestulen. Beautiful, beautiful place. I, I didn't want to go. <laughs> I, 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 I was being dragged up this mountain. At a quick rate by read, but once we got to the top, it, it was worth it. The it was payoff cool. was worth it. <laughs> yeah. And not just mountains, lots of good jiu-jitsu on this trip as well, right? I mean, like, as, as Will said, we did Brazilian nationals. We literally got off the plane, went straight to the tournament. Two days of some of the best jiu-jitsu in the world. The last major tournament before Worlds, we saw Nicholas Marigali on fire submitting every single one of his opponents except one on the way to gold in his weight class and bronze in the absolute and then days and days of hitting up different gyms uh, we hit up alliance in sao paulo ns brotherhood leandro lowe's gym in sao paulo alliance mario hayes in porto Alegre, where marigali and fabio Olano and those guys train and then finishing off in gf team jaime canuto patrick gojo jake mckenzie just a ton of hard hard training where did you guys visit where to begin? Yeah. Started yeah. in New York, I guess, at JT Torres' uh, somewhat new academy, Essential Jiu Jitsu, yeah. at White, White Plains, New York, right? Just outside the city. Yeah. Uh, gorgeous academy, really modern, super clean, and full of savages, of course. Almost got arrested for flying my drone. Yeah, but Reed's not allowed back there yeah, anymore. Not allowed back, <laughs> but, but, uh, gorgeous academy, loved, loved it there. That was then fun. we popped into Unity, which is a very gritty academy, we might call it. Man, those um, pro training sessions are no joke, huh? Probably the gnarliest training I think we saw. Just crazy. They shower, they shower in their geese. They, they shower, shower in their geese. More cool times. off. Yeah. And dude, it was so hot out. in there. We were sweating bullets in there. We weren't even training. There's just like, everybody's on the ground. There's no air on the ground. Like, I'm, I'm standing up trying to get air <laughs> in the ceiling. Is that is that by design? Like, they're doing that? I think that? so. Murillo closes so. that window, man. He wants the guys to suffer in training so that they're prepared yeah. to deal with whatever environmental conditions they face when they go into so the like they go into a tournament like it's cool um, they can use the mat the mat <laughs> is big like they can they can just like express Draggy. themselves yeah. now, instead, <laughs> instead of like just the horridness of, of being on top of everybody and, and I mean the, we had to shower when we left the, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we weren't even training and we were like all right time to shower and go to the airport then we ended up in Ireland at Daryl O'Connell's gym which was 
much bigger, yeah. um, but similar vibe, very intense training. Uh, really now, Ireland really cool isn't exactly guys. known as like the major international hotspot for jiu-jitsu, but these guys, are, they're working to change that, right? Absolutely, man. I mean, the, the jiu-jitsu there, we, the, what we saw, we were only there for a few days, but man, we got such a good exposure to the jiu-jitsu community there, I think. We went to the Irish Open, which was the biggest jiu-jitsu competition uh, ever held in Ireland. 800 people, or over, more than that. Yeah, over 800 yeah. competitors signed up. Um, you know, from, from white to black belts we saw there. There um, is bringing like 15 guys over to California. For worlds. That's worlds. huge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you went to? To Norway. Norway? To Norway. 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 Hung, hung out with the Vikings. The Vikings. Tommy Langacker and Esme Matiasen. Those guys are so cool. They showed us around. We had a great time. And uh, we wanted to find out how these two guys training Relatively in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, no, totally in the middle. Totally yeah. in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we, we, flew to, we fly to Oslo, then we fly to the west coast of Norway, Stavanger, then we drive two hours. Take a ferry. Take a ferry. <laughs> yeah. to, you know, we're driving through these fjords and everything. We're like tunneling into the earth at some point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're like, where are we going? You know. But, uh, and at the end of it, I mean, talk about guys who have had just an incredible year. Uh, yeah. Tommy Langacker is just on fire. Cannot wait to watch him uh, at Worlds. You know, so we had to go. We just felt like we had to go. And it's, to it's literally those. just those like three guys yeah there's big guys as well, well. Um, and they just go in there and kill each other but it's amazing because there is some purpose to it it's not like unity where on the day we were there it was just pohada the whole time just <laughs> non-stop falls to the wall these guys have a really interesting way of drilling that's not exactly positional sparring but very similar where the, the, the opponent on the bottom or the top is actively resisting at like 70 percent they eventually give up the sweep or give up the pass but they really make them work for it and give them different looks. And the whole idea is, is to chain together different combinations of techniques to see all the possibilities. I thought we were just rolling. <laughs> yeah. apparently, apparently we were drilling. I thought, I thought they were just beating me up and apparently they were drilling. So well, they're doing think. something, right? And then you guys finished up winning because you came back to the States and there was one yeah, final yeah. stop before you came, came back to Texas. Came all the way back. We, came, we went to Team Lloyd Irvin in um, Camp Springs, Maryland. Man, that was another phenomenal trip. Uh, Jameel Hill, Ray Alexander. Tim Spriggs. Tim Spriggs. DJ. You know what I want to know? Huge, what was the vibe huge. like in that room? And it was it was it was such a good vibe in in the room. It really was like the 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 the, the room that they've put together there. Like they all started Malachi, um, Jamil, Array. They all started when they were like five, six, and nine the kids years old. Yeah. You know, and they've all come up th through yellow belt to, to black belt. You know, and it's such a explorative room. It feels like you know they're all really exploring a lot of different techniques, and and they're all interested in. And you know they all have crazy different styles, right? Tim Spriggs like yeah. hucking dudes around, but Jamil is so such a tactician. Well, you know, so I, they, I they meld their styles so well together. Though. There's a lot of talk about you know the TLI thing, and people have very strong opinions about the gym and the team itself. But you got it. You can't. You cannot deny that these athletes are incredible competitors. That they're doing some amazing things. And you know, I think like we'll see that as we go into the worlds and stuff. Because you know, every single team has its own flavor, its own style of jujitsu. And it's all leading into all this, this trip. The whole, the whole purpose of our trip was to visit these different teams, get a feel for what each of these different gyms is doing, what the special source is, right? As we go into the World Championships. And I think we all got an amazing appreciation of what that is. But what are the biggest stories as we go into the World Championships now? Because now we've actually been there, we've seen what the training's like, now the list of signups is out. We know who's going to compete. We're still waiting for the brackets to come out, but let's go around the table and find out what are the biggest stories going into the World Championship. I think the absolute biggest one is uh, Low versus Marigali. So they're both signed up in the super heavyweight division, and there is this kind of rivalry that, that developed last year in 2017. So uh, Marigali's first year as a black belt loses to Low at Pans at weight and absolute, and then comes back at the World Championship and beats Low. You know that's in like final, in the no final. Yeah. Yeah. First it's year, the first year at black belt. The first year that Leandro hadn't won a gold medal at World since like 2012 or something like that. And, as well. and of course, in 2017, Leandro won double gold at Pans and double gold at European. So, so he was on a roll. Right. And Marigali was the one who put that to a, a and stop. And now this year already Leandro's won double gold at Pans, right? So he's, mm -hmm. he's and we haven't seen Marigali. However, we did see Marigali down at Brazilian Nationals and the kid is on fire. Yeah, yes. It's <laughs> not like he's been down there just 
hanging out, not training. <laughs> he has been, I think, focused. Like, he did not want any other distractions. His focus is to yeah, come back at It was at a calculated Worlds. move, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he is, man, he looks leagues ahead. In, in Brazilian Nationals, he looked leagues ahead of the competition. He did. Only Honorio managed to score on him, I believe. That was literally the only points that he that he actually uh, was against him was Honorio's one guard pass right at the end, like a momentary lapse in concentration cost him the spot in the final but then like he submitted every single other opponent and like we're not really talking like you know hard matches he just blew guys away in like two three minutes right dude and this is the best of the best down in brazil like these guys are super hard comp competitors and uh you can and what, what about leandro and merigali because merigali went up a, a weight category this year right that's right and now and then uh and low is right there with them you know this is going to be super heavyweight the first time we've ever seen leandro low in the super heavyweight division I think he just wants to run it back with, with Marigali and a little bit of a grudge match. A little bit of a grudge he match. He did unfinished business. Gives me, there, gives me right? goosebumps, man. Cannot wait for that one. That was one of the craziest moments of last crazy. year for sure. But not and, only yeah. we've also got in the super heavyweight division, we've got Gutenberg Pereira who wants to run it back. So it's his first to silver to Leandro at the pants. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Similar story to Marigali. You know, he won the Brown Belt World Championship and now it's his first year as a black belt, lost to low in the absolute, and now it's kind of will we see it happen again? Both gonna go against each other in the super heavyweight. So we've got we've got Muhammad Ali in that in that division. Um, a bunch of really tough guys. So super heavyweight is that's gonna be a fun one. I, I can't wait for super heavy. Chase, Absolutely. What you got? For me, I, I think the big story is the number of Americans that we could see not just meddling, but maybe at the very top of the podium bringing home gold. Right now, there's only four ever. Mm. And we, we have candidates like well, Jay. let's say three and a half because Drysdale, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of like the. I had to remind myself that he's, he's technically American. <laughs> he but, is everybody, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but. But yeah. anyways, I'm looking forward to seeing JT Torres, who is singing the lightweight. We have Evan Najmi as well, who's been on fire all year. Gianni Grippo, Shane Jamil Taylor, Tim Spriggs, AJ Agassiz. There are so many guys that are right there, have always been towards the top, and it just it just feels like their time. And of course, I'm leaving out one big name here. Keenan Cornelius. Yeah, so. we'll come to that in a second. But about Gianni, actually, like we were looking at the results for this year, and Gianni, he went into the final of every major tournament this year. He got silver at Europeans, gold at Pans, and then silver at Brazilian Nationals. But there's no clear like uh, dominant guy at featherweight this year, right? It, it, like with the lack of Cabrinha, you know, he's not signed up this year. He won everything last year, but without him, it kind of leaves featherweight wide open, right? It's crazy, and I, I'm really, really anticipating those brackets because I could tell a lot of the story. But for now, yeah, it's impossible to pick. Um, Jamil has looked amazing, but. Right now, Johnny's got his number. It seems, you know, three to one, I believe, is where that stands. But you never know. You can never tell. So this so. Gianni or Jamil are two really good American candidates. Of course, we have right Mikey Musumeci, who we haven't seen like since uh, last year, you winning can worlds. Well. Could, could be a two-time world champion. The maybe. only two-time American world champion, yes. I believe. Yeah. So uh, I'm super pumped. We could really see a changing of the guard here and see a lot more Americans bringing home top honors. Well, you just mentioned that phrase, changing of the guard, and that leads into, I think, your storyline for Worlds, right? Well, man, I think that um, I'm really excited to see Bouchesha. That, that's one I, I am looking forward to. He's a guy that's that- That's not changing of the guard. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> wait, wait, he's I just, working towards it. Because Bouchesha is a guy who, who um, also has a chance to make history. So I'm definitely always looking out for, for those storylines. But I do want to talk about the um, the, the purple and, and brown belts. You know, those are two of the divisions that I'm always super excited to watch every single time. Uh, you know, obviously I, I love the black belts and I, I think there's some really great storylines in the black belt divisions, but there's even better stories in the purple belt divisions, I think, and in the brown belt divisions. Um, the, the, Open classes are always some of the most exciting matches of the tournament. You know, we just released our rankings uh, for purple belt and for brown belt. You know, and I think especially There's a lot of talk about those too, huh? Especially at purple belt, we have a guy Connor DeAngelis ranked number one right now. Um, one of the only American purple belts. There's still there's it's still a, a sport that's largely dominated by Brazilians, especially in the lower belts. So to have a guy like Conor DeAngelis representing America, making uh, the, the podium in the open class and and his division, um, that's a huge deal. I think also got to mention guys like Andrew Wiltsey, um, Roberto Jimenez. Uh, there's just so many stacked guys. I've never known more people in the purple belt division than I do now. So I'm looking out for so many guys and. 
as well as the brown belt. I think the rankings actually is going to help a lot because, you know, you mentioned a couple of names there like Roberto and Andrew, and people have asked, why aren't they on the top 15 pound for pound rankings? Mm. And it's because, well, A, it's because there's like a million amazing purple belt and brown belts out there that, you know, you have to consider when making these rankings. But to be honest, I think it's great because now we have like this very considered ranking. You know, we took into account all the different results, the head to head results and stuff. And now it's going to give largely from the last year for this season. Just, just yeah, this yeah, season. this season. So. But that's going to give guys an incentive now to fight even harder to get those results and get onto that ranking. So I'm sure guys like Andrew and Roberto, who you just mentioned right there, they'll be looking to get on this. You know, what's right? so interesting about these rankings, too, is that there's not one name that is like, OK, this is the dominant person who runs this division or runs all of the 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 brown belts or all the purple belts. It's up for grabs. So mm. it's yeah. hyper competitive. You've got like for example, um, you were saying Conor D'Angelo's. He lost to Hedda Meptouche in uh, Europeans, Europeans, right? Yep. So absolute division. Everyone is is uh, it's up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely is. And speaking about the non american uh, sorry, the non Brazilians on that, the purple belt. We've got um, America, Sweden, France, Japan uh, represented, and then a brown belt. We've got uh, the states, Australia as well. So. Um, Definitely some international competitors coming in and chipping away that, that dominance there, the Brazilians, but. We've got a lot of um, Asian competitors too that I, that I think are yeah. on top of our lists as well. Coming through, coming through. And uh, any, any particular brown belt uh, competitors or matches are you looking forward to coming up? Man, I, I always like the, I've seen Victor Hugo and Dom Bell go at it a number yes, of times this, this, this year, and um, I'd like to see that one again at Worlds. I this, think they're two of the best brown belts, and, and I'd like to one see I'd, that one. I'd really like to see, and that's uh, Fabio Olano and Devante Johnson. There you go. Mainly because we, when we were down in Brazil, we got to see Fabio Olano's dance moves, and if you guys <laughs> haven't seen this video, the, the kid's got, got moves. Some skills. Devante, got some moves. Devante wasn't there at Unity because he was still in Brazil. He fought a Brazilian right. nationals. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have asked him for a response dance. Oh, <laughs> man. He tried to... That would have been epic. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Jake Watson uh, at Brown Belt. He's always doing some high-flying finishes, mm -hmm. flying triangles. Kids nuts. Another guy who was right there, just just outside the top 15 on that ranking as well. But uh, I mean, personally, I, I'm looking forward to Mauricio Kennedy, Oliveira Kennedy as Messi well. LT. Yep. Oh, yeah. Kennedy, 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 huge. Yeah. Uh, Jonatus, Mauricio Jonatus Oliveira Gracie. from GF team. This kind of blew my killer. mind at Pans. You know, I, I really hadn't noticed him much before, much to my own detriment. And at Pans, I'm like, wow, this this guy's much He's must special. see TV. Mm. Well, <laughs> I gotta say that the the story that I'm not necessarily most excited about, but certainly most intrigued going into Worlds is whether Keenan Cornelius can finally pop his Worlds gold medal cherry, right? Because he's he's been right there, right? The last couple of years, he's been working towards it. And, you know, Keenan is instantly and automatically mentioned as one of the top American competitors in the sport and yet still denied that title, right? So is this his year, right? He's competing in the heavyweight division which traditionally is a, a tough division, but maybe he has a better chance than say medium heavy, which is a little bit more stacked and you know, teammates as well. So you'd be forced to possibly close out. But I think in the heavyweight division, you know, who's the biggest threat? It's gonna be Fleepy Penna, right? Fleepy Penna, who has so, been on a tear this year. I mean, the last, the guy's just awesome. He's been winning everything, ADCC and then onward. He's, we just won been on three fire. events in, in April, right? So, yeah. Man, for me, Flippy Penner, I know we have Bouchesha as the pound for pound number one in the ranking, but I gotta say, like, Flippy Penner is right up there for me, you know, and not just because he beat Bouchesha last year at ADCC. I'm not even counting that. I'm just looking at total performances because Bouchesha is a little bit more selective where he competes now, right? But Flippy Penner, I mean, he's done everything. He's got right to the top of the sport, and yet he's still happy to go out there and, and seek out those big matches mm -hmm. and take out those, like, you know, the high paying tournaments and stuff. So, and I believe him and uh, Keenan are one and one. It's correct in, in their uh, in their history of competing. Against and it's each other. been a few years. It's been like three 2015 years. Twenty fifteen was the last time that they actually fought. Yeah, so yeah. both guys. You could you could make an easy argument that they are at the peak of their careers right now. They've developed a ton since twenty fifteen, and uh, man, I can't, I hope that match happens. That that's talking about that incredible. division though. That that division it's is stacked. Man, heavy. one guy who yeah. really impressed me down at Brazilian Nationals was Felipe Andrew. I think mm. he's a sleeper. He's a disruptor. He can really ruin someone's day. He he's actually a finisher, huh? he's, he's a, a finisher. first year black belt as well. Correct. First year yes. black belt. Yes. Submitted Demetrius Souza in the final with a nasty full lock. And no one beats that guy, especially in Brazil. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. He yeah. really yeah, gets he's got fun. He's got fun full locks and knee bars and stuff like that. He's fun mm -hmm. to watch. And then you got Tim Spriggs, Jackson Souza, Adam Wardzinski, Patrick. 
Vincent Gaudio is in at heavyweight this year. He was telling us that he's gonna, he's put on a, a little bit of weight. You know, the weight cut was hurting him a bit, and he feels stronger and faster. I don't want to imagine a stronger Patrick Gaudio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's he's a beast. Fast, fast. <laughs> and of course, the the return of Shanji Hibero, who we haven't seen at Worlds for a couple of years. He's coming back to get in the yeah. party as well. He looked That's amazing the, at ADCC, man. I, I can't wait to see him compete yeah, again. Absolutely. That's an insane division right there. So no guarantee that we're even going to see Felipe Pena and and, and Keenan in the final, and it's going to obviously come down to the seeding as well of where they get placed but holy crap man that's a that's another one a mouth-watering prospect yeah, right yeah and those are just a few stories worlds is so crazy oh I mean, my there's gosh, so much I can't stuff happening maybe even touch the juveniles yet juveniles have always an amazing show on saturday i think so we've got to give a mention to bruno malfasini as well right because you know he's he's there are two guys <coughs> who are going to make history at worlds this year and as Bushesha you mentioned right he's currently tied with roger gracie 10 world titles five weight class five absolute both of them have 10 world titles Conceivably, Bushesha could take two more gold medals next week if he wins his weight in absolute, right? And he's obviously, he's, he's pretty much the favorite to do so. That's setting the record. But then Malfasini as well is currently a nine-time world champion just in one weight division, and he could then become a 10-time world champion in one weight class. I'm not even sure that's a record that we'll see beaten for, Ever. well, potentially like a generation or two, right? Well, it took eight years, right? So Haji Gracie set that record in 2010. It took eight years for someone to come around. And, and Bouchesha, who knows, maybe he's on the end of his career, right? But I can't. It's sad to say that considering the guy's only like 29. Yeah. I, don't yeah. think, I don't think he's done. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think it's, it's going to be a while. We got Megaton, who's doing his 23rd world championship. 22nd. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We have the most female competitors ever, I believe. Oh, man, the women's so, divisions this year are incredible. Yeah, I cannot Best wait to see some seen, of that. Think, so. You know, uh, Talita versus Jezri is another match I'd love to see run back again. They have a bit of a, a rubber match going on there with T Talita winning worlds. Just a lot of new blood in the, in the women's divisions this year as well, right? A lot of new black belts we see come through. It really feels just in general. It feels like a, a real a, a injection of, of a lot of new blood, a lot of excitement. You know, I think we're going to be sitting around the water cooler on Monday, you know, kind of Googling a lot of people and, and, and talking about, wow, I didn't expect that. So mm -hmm. This is interesting. We just had a comment come in on the Facebook Live. Who wins the bracket between the four of us? <laughs> that, I'm not, I'm I not sure that's I, mean, I, oh. I don't think it's, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, whatever happens, it's certainly not getting streamed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Chase, to be honest. It's sneaky, it's, sneaky it's, guy. It's the obvious answer. Chase is in lists. <laughs> yeah. It depends if we're playing prison rules, then I win. I don't know, so. I think the most credentialed athlete at the table is uh, Irish champion and Mexican champion over here. And Guam champion. Don't forget about that. <gasps> don't forget. Oh, man. <laughs> However, I, have, I have a pro record of 1-0 oh, where Reed is 0-1. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. SJ, SJJF, <laughs> world champion. World champion. World champion. Oh, no. God damn. Oh, and I see crickets over a thousand. <laughs> 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 the only black belt, though. The only silver, black belt. Me yeah. silver medalist, state tournament, brown belt in Rio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Whatever. Man, I just, want, I just want to jump in real quick and just add a few more things to, to the Road to Worlds um, experience. We, we went around, obviously, we talked a little bit about it for two weeks. And I just want to say just it, what a special trip it really mm. was. Oh. It, it was such an incredible trip. It made me so thankful for jujitsu and everything. I, we met so many people there and they were so nice to us, so kind to us. It really meant a lot, like everybody coming up to us and saying that how much they like the podcast or how much they like what we're doing for the sport. And uh, man, it was really a, a trip I, I'll never forget. There was so much positivity that I experienced there. It's something that um, you know really affected me. So I really, really appreciate everybody coming up to me or coming up to us and just it was a wild ride. It was, it was yeah, so I mean, special. It was I such a special a, experience. So a big thank you, thank you to everybody, right, who opened their doors for us and, and received us so well in every gym Absolutely. that we went to. It was an incredible experience. But, um, man, especially with how are we going to... Especially with Shadow Richie Shadow Richie, a legend Here's of Ireland himself. Though, how are we going to top this next year, man? Like, how are we going to do a Road to Worlds bigger and better next year? I can't wait to try, man. I can't yeah. wait to try. It's, it's my favorite time of the year. It's such a fun time of I'm the year. I'm saying it now. We're going to Asia. I want to go to Japan again, so let's do that. Yeah, there's definitely oh, yeah. some Rub international name locations we yeah. can hit up. Maybe China. Viking Wong, I'm calling on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I think that's it. A short and sweet episode of Fistful of Collars for you this, this week. A little bit different. Sorry for the, uh, for the different visual and then maybe the audio quality and stuff, but we'll be back in the studio in a couple of weeks, obviously taking a break for Worlds when we're all in California next week, but we'll be back at it to talk about, I'm sure there's going to be some crazy stuff to dissect from the events of next week. Are we pumped? Let's do it. Let's so do it, man. Pumped. Let's Let's do it. Hype. We'll it's see you guys in, the, in Long Beach. Starts May 31st. Can't wait for it. See you there.